and sing Shir Hadash, which contrary to its name is not a new song, but it's a good song. So let's try it. Sing unto God. 
Shabbat shalom. You don't know it, but it's very brave of you all to be here. Um, it's 4th of July weekend, and you're getting the service of the youngest rabbi whose watch is broken. So, good luck. <laughs> the youngest rabbi and the oldest man. Exactly. We have got, we're a perfect match. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes. Um, but I think that it's, for me at least, I'm so grateful that it's Shabbat. Um, it's been a, a really rough week for a lot of us. And I, it made me think of a time a few years ago um, when it had been a, also a really, really rough week. There was some horrific news event. Um, and I happened to be at CBST, which is a synagogue in New York City. It's an LGBTQ congregation that, is, uh, that was founded, I believe, by Rabbi Sharon Kleinbaum who is this very um, brilliant and charismatic rabbi and very unique. And she was standing in front of all of us at the beginning of the service and everyone was just so heavy and sad. And she started pointing her finger and kind of shouting, but like nice shouting um, in a way that I won't do the way that she did it. I won't do it justice, but she was pointing her finger and she was saying, Jews, do not despair. Jews, do not despair. <laughs> and she kept doing that through the whole service. She kept saying, Jews, do not despair. That is not how we respond um, to, to things that feel overwhelming and difficult to us. Um, and so I wanted to pass her message on to you tonight of Jews, do not despair um, because we're here and we have Shabbat and we have each other. And it's, it's not just for Jews, obviously, it's for, for everybody in the world. Do not despair. Um, but that, that we need, I think we need messages like that on Shabbat um, and times together. So we're going to be here and we're going to be praying and we're going to be doing the opposite of despairing, um, which is singing together. And so we're going to start with bringing in light and bringing in hope. And we are on page 120. And I'm very honored and also very grateful to invite up um, the incredible Liz Rosen, who's going to lead us in our candle blessing tonight. We're on 120. Shabbat Shalom. Cantor, will you lead us in the Kiddush? I can, I can do that. Oh, great. I'll even turn on my microphone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we are on page 123. Uh-huh. Okay. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Bore Peri HaGaven Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kishanu B'Mitzvotah 
ורצה בנו, ושבת קודשו באהבה וברצון הנחילנו, זיכרון למעשה וראשית, כי הוא יום תחילה למקרא הקודש, זכר ליציאת מצרים. כיוונו בחרת, ואותנו קידשת מכל העמים. ושבת קודשך באהבה וברצון הנחלתנו. ברוך אתה אדוני מקדש השבת. אמן. We turn to page 138 for Lecha Dodi, and the words of Lecha Dodi ask us repeatedly to wake up. They remind us to think about this Shabbat, what do we need to wake up to? What do we need to be aware of? What do we want to be um, thinking about? And so we'll do verses one, two, five, and then when we get to verse nine, we'll rise in body and in spirit um, as we greet the Shabbat and the Shabbat bride. We turn to page 146 for the Barahu, a prayer where we surround ourselves with blessing.
we turn to page 152 for Shema, a prayer of quiet where we let um, ourselves sit in silence and try to turn away from the need to be constantly notified of things, the need to constantly know everything, to hear everything. We just try to be sitting with the silence that is within ourselves. We're on page 152. experience this week where 
my mom put an emergency survival kit in my car and it's been in there forever and I've never really looked at it or had to look at it. And I happened to open it this week and I saw that she put like 20 bags of her favorite black tea in the emergency for survival kit alongside like, you know, the things you wear and the flashlights and the packets of water and that kind of thing. Um, and it was a really good reminder to me that sometimes um, we need way more than just survival. I mean, all of the time we need way more than just survival. Um, it's okay to ask for those things in life that not only bring us peace, but also bring us joy. And I think that's what Hashki Venu is asking for. It's asking for God to spread a shelter of protection over us, but also a deep sense of peace and a deep sense of joy. And so I'm asking myself in this Hashki Venu, what else do I need in my survival kit besides the very basics? So we're on page 160. And we're actually on the last three lines of that first long paragraph. Again, page 164 for our Amidah, our central and standing prayer. And so we rise in body and spirit. Shiaumagin, 
Baruch atah Adonai, Magin Abraham, Ezrat Sarah, Atah Gibor Leolam Adonai, Nechayev Akol Atah Rav Lehoshia, Morid Atal, Nechalkel Chayim Bechesed, Nechaye hako berachamim rabim, so met no flim verope polim, who matir a surim, who mekaye memunato, lishene ahar, nicham mohaba gehurot, who mido mela. Melech melit u mechaye u mat miach Yeshua bne manat alecha yot hakol baruchat Adonai mechaye hakol atach kadosh v'shim chakadosh kadoshim b'chol yom yahalu chasela baruchat Adonai. We take time now for silent prayer and personal reflection and meditation. If you're standing, we invite you to stay standing. And when you're done with your prayer, um, when you're, if you're standing, you can be seated. Shalom Rabbi Yisrael Amcha Tassim Leolam Shalom Rabbi Yisrael Amcha Tassim Leolam Ki Ato Shalom, Kiyo 
to the Mishaberach, our prayer for healing and strength. And this is, every single week is a week where there are so many people, ourselves included, who are in need of healing. And it's possible to kind of list out every single kind of struggle or suffering. Um, but this week in particular, I'm thinking of anybody who has been a victim of any kind of violence, anybody who's a survivor of sexual violence, anybody who's been struggling with depression or with anxiety, and anybody who is in need of essential reproductive health care and is now struggling or is no longer able to access it. There are so many different people who we might know who are in need and feeling. So if there's someone in particular who you're thinking of, I invite you to shape, share their name out loud as my hand goes around the room. And then we'll turn to page 371 for Misha Vera. <laughs> also include the names of those who our entire community and including people who are joining us online are thinking of and we wish for um, wholeness and healing for each and every one of them we're on page 371 in middle school, my dad gave me a copy of a tattered yellow book called We Are Everywhere, written by Jerry Rubin. Rubin, I'm sure some of you know, was a leader of a group called the Yippies. It's seeing some like recognition, some nods. This group, for those of you who didn't grow up in this time, you might have heard of them because Steven Spielberg featured them famously last year in his movie, The Chicago Seven. In the 1960s, the Yippies used their charisma, leadership, art to organize protests. They protested against the Vietnam War, they protested for freedom of speech, and they protested against the generally oppressive culture of the 1960s. As a teenager, I was dazzled by Rubin's writing and his partner in crime, Abby Hoffman, and I was particularly proud that they are both Jewish men. I was impressed by their rebelliousness, their rejection of mainstream society, 
and their utter commitment to responding to the urgency they felt in that moment. In what turned out to be a fairly whitewashed view of history, I believed that hippies like Rubin and Hoffman had solved most of our problems of social inequity. I also believed that were I too to be faced with the racism and sexism of the 1960s, I would spend most of my days like a yippie, dropping out from mainstream society and protesting in a park. Now I find myself as an adult faced with similar crushing realities of abuse of power, racism, and sexism. And while I have attended the occasional protest, I haven't responded in the way my younger self assumed I would to this moment. I find myself asking, who am I going to be in this moment? Who are we going to be in this moment? I don't think I'm alone in feeling overwhelmed and lost. I have heard a number of people in our community describe feeling helpless, overtaken by the powerful waves of change that keep crashing onto us. The writer and activist Adrian Marie Brown writes, right now we are in a fast river together. Every day there are changes that seem unimaginable until they occur. I have also experienced that feeling of being uncontrollably in a fast river, but I also find myself feeling like I'm sitting in the mud. I'm stuck. I'm confused about how to respond. And so I'm trying to reset, trying to wake up, trying to ask myself, who do I want to be? Who do we need to be in this moment? We have so many incredible activists at Temple Shalom. I am continually blown away by the way our community connects itself to our city and our world. But I know that there are some of you who feel like me, who are looking around and who are asking yourselves, what the heck are we supposed to do? I genuinely believe that Judaism has a unique wisdom that can help us in this time. Judaism provides a countercultural way of life. And so we seek out its, moment, its wisdom, particularly in moments when we need difference, when we need a new way of seeing ourselves and seeing the world. One answer to that question, who do we need to be in this moment, comes from our tradition through Rabbi Hillel. Rabbi Hillel said in Pirkei Avot, which is a collection of pieces of advice that we've passed down for over a thousand years. Hillel said, do not separate yourself from the community. Do not separate yourself from the community. Participating more in community might seem like an odd or insignificant way to respond to a moment of crisis. But connection fosters the bonds needed to create and organize power. Hannah Arendt pointed out that totalitarian governments gain traction when people feel lonely and disconnected. It's through our relationships here at Temple Shalom that we create power, that we work towards change. A few weeks ago, some of our members came together and said, we are watching abortion access and a right, the right to access a safe abortion disintegrate before our eyes. We want a way to respond. They formed a group, and that group has been reaching out to other local Jewish abortion advocacy groups. They've been sending messages like, what do you need right now? How can we help? And they're planning gatherings to educate and to activate our community. They're saying, we don't have all of the answers yet. We don't actually know the perfect way to respond to this moment, but this is who we are trying to be. And they're also looking for more people. So if you're interested in getting involved, you can reach out to me or you can keep your eye out for some communication that will be coming your way in the next weeks. Another way Judaism guides us in our response to this moment is through the idea of halakha. 
Halakha is the collection of Jewish laws that essentially tells you how to live a Jewish life. Halakha has opinions on everything. Halakha tells us how to eat, how to treat employees, what prayers to say when we wake up in the morning. And as Reformed Jews, most of us ignore a lot of halakha. We live by halakhic ideas, even if we don't live fully halakhic lives. But halakha means the walk or the way. And this is significant because it reminds us that Judaism wants us to care more about what we do than what we believe. It wants us to care about the way we walk. Halakha sends us a message that it is the small decisions we make each day about how to live our lives that make up who we are. This idea that our smallest decisions matter might seem overwhelming at first, but to me, the message that comes from Halakha is start small. If you're a person who wants to respond to this moment with action, but you don't know where to begin, start small. It's okay to start small. Commit to doing one thing. It could be one thing a week, one thing a day, one thing a month. It could be learning more about an organization and then signing up for a volunteer opportunity. It could be getting coffee with someone who you know can get you involved in an issue. It could be calling or writing to a state representative or making a donation. Start small, and over time, your ability to know what to do and where to focus and who you can be will grow. The Talmud tells us a fantastic story about starting small. And some of you have heard this story before, but I want to tell it from a different angle. It tells us a story of Rabbi Akiva. The text says that great Rabbi Akiva, one of the greatest rabbis in our history, how did he get his start? Rabbi Akiva desperately wanted to become a rabbi. But most of the people who became rabbis in the era where he was alive um, grew up surrounded by scholars. And Rabbi Akiva's parents were farmers. Most of the people who wanted to become rabbis in that era started studying when they were children. But Rabbi Akiva was 40 years old, and the text tells us he had never learned anything in his life. One day, he was standing by a well, and he noticed that one of the stones of the well had a hole in it. He asked someone, where did that come from? How was that hole carved into that stone? And someone returned to him and answered, it happened because there were slow drips of water that fell onto the stone and made a change over time. Rabbi Akiva looked at the water and he looked at the stone and he was able to see a completely different version of himself. He was able to see who he needed to become in that moment. The Talmud tells us that Akiva took his son and together they found a rabbi who was willing to even teach a 40 year old. Akiva said, please, Rabbi, teach us some Torah. And the rabbi sat down and slowly taught him first the Aleph Bet, one letter at a time, and then Hebrew, one word at a time, and then stories, one story at a time, until he, came on to be, he went on to become one of the most knowledgeable rabbis of his generation. The Talmud tells us specifically that he was known for bringing light to things which people were not able to see about themselves. As we ask ourselves, who do we want to be in this moment? We can be like Rabbi Akiva. We can be brave enough to start small, to learn one letter at a time. We can be brave enough to join with community, to reach out, to try new things, to create potentially powerful relationships with new people. We can learn from the way that water trickles against a rock, creating slow, steady, long-lasting differences. We can know that the way that things feel right now are not the way that they have to be. We can see ourselves as agents in that potential change. Shabbat Shalom.
we can start small with some announcements, which we have. Um, so we have a few wonderful things coming up in the next week. Do you want to share our first one, or oh, I, I can let do me it? See. Oh. I can't. No. Oh, you're good. There we go. Let's see. Do I have these announcements? Mm -hmm. Actually, I think I cleverly. I can do the first one. Um, do the first one. Yeah. It is that on Thursdays, we now have game day back in person. So we're very excited to announce that if you are a person who loves Mahjong, Canasta, or other various games, you can come play them at Temple Shalom in person starting on Thursday, July 7th at 1 p.m. Okay, now show me the second one. Here's the second one. Oh, the second one is, oh, the Mini Solomon of Blessed Memory Book Club. Thursday, July 7th at 11, mixed presents and in Minnie's memory, and I knew her well, but I'm not quite as old as, as, as Minnie was, but um, yes, come. It's a wonderful group. Amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Beautifully executed announcements. <laughs> um, and then the last one is that we are looking for more people to help out with our prison pen pal program. Um, we have a group of people who uh, write relations or write letters and build relationships um, with people who are in prison. Um, and there, if you are interested in uh, becoming a pen pal, you can reach out to Toby at sholomchicago.org. Um, and I hope that was the right person for you to reach out to. Toby's looking at me. Yes, thumbs up. Thank you. Excellent. Um, so we are going to turn to our closing prayer to Alenu. Uh, we rise in body and in spirit and turn to page 586. Alenu l'shaveach la'adon akol Matit k'dulani yotzev reishi Shelo asamik boye ha'aratzot Lilo samanu k'nishpechot ha'adama Shelo samchel k'ibu ha'em Vigor alinu k'chol amonam Ma'anachnu uri Please be seated. We turn now to our moment of memory, our moment of honoring the people who came before us, who impacted us, who taught us, who were missing in this moment. And we share their names out loud in order to honor them and their lives. So if there's someone you're thinking of, please share their name out loud as I pass my hand around the room. And we'll also see the names of the people who people who are watching online are submitting and thinking of as well. We had to that list, Sanford Sandy Bank, Nancy Jane Cohen Nowak, Dr. Evelyn Perloff, Frida Cohen Kowalski, Andrea Meister Levin, Fern Bonchel Davis, Dorothy Nagler, Jim Ryan, Marcus Maris, Norma Adler, as well as Leo Bacharach, David Berkson, Lauren Berlant, 
Ralph Billingham, Margaret Blaustein Feldman, Lee Deutsch, Ida Flax Ebner, Max Feldman, Sarah Forgosh, Mildred Giddens, Suzanne Goodman, David Falkgold, Rabbi Morris Greenfield, Bessie Heyman, Reuben Kane, Rose Kopler, Leonard Krulowicz, Adele Lane, Simon Levin, Marvin Levine, Marilyn Levy, Marvin Lieberman, Sydney Meister, Detmar Nussbaum, Isidor Oering, Vicki Stone Alt, Gina Rosen Orent, Dale Pollock, Jess S. Ravon, Sydney Randall, Morris Rosenson, Myrtle Rosenthal, Bertha Ross, Alan Shevsky, Edward M. Scheinkopf, Howard Spielman, Donna Strauss, Benita Turk Levy, Sherry Viner, and Olive Warhane. May their memories be for a blessing. We rise and turn to our mourner's cottage. Yit Gadal, the Yit Kadash, Shame Rabba, the Alma, the Vrach, the Rute, the Amlich Malchute, the Chayechon of Yomechon, the Chaye, the whole Beit Israel, for Agala, the Zman Kari, the Imru, Amen. Yehe Shame Rabba, the Varach, the Alam, Ulalme, Almaya, Yit Varach, the Ishtabach, the Yit Paar, the Yit Raman, the Yit Nase. Vid Hadar, Vid Ale, Vid Halal, Shame de Kudisha, Briku, Leela, Min Kol, Vir Hata, Vishirata, Tush Behata, Venechemata, Da Amiran, Ve Alma, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba, Mishemaya, the Chaim, Alenu, Ve Alko, Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. Ose Shalom, Vimruma, Uya Ase Shalom. Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael, v'imru, amen. Ose shalom, v'imru, ma'vuyase shalom, aleinu. The alcohol, the alcohol, is the alcohol, is the emeru. Amen. Please be seated. Cantor, what are we ending with tonight? We are ending, actually, with a Yiddish, a Yiddish song that the partisans who were fighting during World War II sang. And it gave them courage, and I hope that it will give us courage. It can be found on page 676. Um, we'll sing just a little of the Yiddish at the top of the page, and then we'll skip down to the first English verse. So, Zognit Kenmo. Zognit Kenmo las du gehst dem letzten Weg, wenn Himmlen leien er verstehen, bläue Teg, weil Gummit wird noch unser ausgewählte Schoen. Must not say that you now walk the final way, because the dark in heaven's by the blue of day. The time we've longed for will at last draw near, and our steps as drums will sound that we are here. The time we've longed for will at last draw near. Shabbat Shalom.
Shabbat Shalom. Wishing you a Shabbat of rest and a Shabbat of courage and a Shabbat of joy. Um, please feel free to join us in the social hall for some snacks and cookies and coffee. Um, and hope you have a great Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom.